Hi, my name is Kevin Green, and today I'm going to be presenting our work on learning spring mass locomotion, where we guide a learned policy using a reduced order model. So in my view, leg locomotion is fundamentally a hierarchical problem, where the levels of the hierarchy are separated based on the frequency of control and the information content available. So at the lowest level, you have local dynamics at a very high rate. This includes the passive dynamics, like the springs and inertia of your leg, and also the active compliance, so generally local PD feedback control. As you move higher in the hierarchy, you now have access to the full robot state, and you're controlling sort of in the context of system level dynamics. So this slows down generally, and you also have the full, you know, the full state information. So this would be inverse dynamics, hybrid zero dynamics, and learned control methods. Uh, we move even higher, and we get to multi-step planning, which you deal with an even simpler model generally, and you'll incorporate also a detailed model of the environment. This would, the, the principal method here that is pretty common is receding horizon model predictive control. And we move even higher and we get to task level planning. And in my mind, this is like moving through an environment where we have a course model of a relatively large space. And a really good example, I think, of this is some of the work with quadrupeds in the DARPA Subterranean Challenge. And in this work, we're really going to be focusing on how we can incorporate RL into this, into the full structure of it. And so RL reinforcement learning has been really good at controlling the system level dynamics on down. But incorporating some sort of online planner and reduced order model planners is a more difficult problem. So we're going to look to really at the interaction between a reduced order multi-step planner and system level dynamics through a learned policy. So if we look closer at those, we can create a structure like this, where we have some motion goal that's fed into a reactive planner, which uses a simplified model. And we're dealing with bipeds here, so we're going to be using inverted pendulum models. That's going to optimize a motion and apply a motion command that's then sent to a learned controller, which at a higher rate is going to attempt to stabilize around that motion command and send actions through PD targets is what we'll use here to uh, a full order robot. We're then going to observe the state of the robot using a state observer and feed that back so the learned controller can stabilize and the reactive pl planner can at a slower rate replan the motion with an updated robot position. However, implementing both a reactive planner with a world model and the learned controller is a lot for one paper. So what we're going to zoom in on specifically is understanding the motion command and the learned controller and how we're going to uh, train that. But we need to have these motion commands need to come from somewhere. So what we're going to use or what we used is a, uh, a reduced order model library where this has a it's a library of a bunch of steady state gates for a model. So varying from zero to two meters per second, you have a bunch of periodic gates at different speeds. And the user will command a velocity via like a joystick on a controller. It will select one of these out of the library, which we then use as the motion command into the learned controller. Okay, so let's take a look now at the model we use to generate this library. And so this reduced order model we're going to use is an actuated spring-loaded inverted pendulum model and a bipedal one, so it has two legs. This model has a point mass body, so there's no orientation information. It has a leg length extension actuator in series with a damped leg spring and then a point foot. And so this leg is entirely massless, so when you're in single stance, you can teleport this leg forward to be ready for the next double stance. And we're going to take this model and we're going to run it through a direct collocation trajectory optimization. And it will end up producing motions that look kind of like this. So this is a one meter per second gate. In this optimization, we applied constraints to make it so it's physically actualizable, actual, or it's physically reasonable for our robot. And that's things like the maximum length and minimum and maximum length uh, legs. So limits on those. Uh, the maximum force that can be applied through a leg. And then to get the gates we want, we can apply constraints so that the average velocity is the specific one we want for that uh, for that gate, and then also that they have to be periodic. And then they we optimize with an objective, which is minimum torque squared, which is equivalent to minimizing the thermal losses in an electric motor if these legs were electric motors. 
So we sweep from zero to two meter per second in 0.1 meter per second steps, which gives us 21 motions. And then because the legs can teleport uh, forward because there's no inertia, we then create afterwards a smooth polynomial to connect the footholds and then have a vertical ground clearance of our case 0.2 meters. And so if we look at what these gates look like, so here's one for 0.7 meters per second. And you can see we have a relative, the body oscillates up and down, it moves the feet forward, and then here's a slightly faster one, the 1.2 meter per second. And the cool thing is it actually is able to adjust the frequency because it can adjust the total duration of this gate. So we actually see the, the stepping frequency adjusted over time. So the con learned control structure where we're gonna use this library is shown here. And if we're gonna start on the left, we have uh, the user selects a forward velocity command, which goes into our library. We select out the right gate that matches that forward command. And then we have a periodic clock, which moves forward over time and allows us to pick the right point along the gate cycle that we're gonna use. And once we have that exact state of this reduced order model, we can pass that forward into our learned policy. So we have the body and the foot positions so that's three 3D vectors. So you have the position of the body and then the position of the feet, position of the feet relative to the body. So that's nine inputs. And then we have the velocity of the body and the velocity of the feet relative to the body. And that's nine more inputs that go into the neural network. And then the rest of the bottom arrow is the observed state of our overall robot. So we're running a state estimator. And then we have the observed state, which in our case is 46 dimensional, which includes position and velocity of the robot's floating base and of its joints. These all get fed into the neural network, which in our case, it's a feed forward neural network with two hidden layers, each of which is 256 by 256. And the output is the 10 dimensional set of joint PD targets. These joint PD targets are then sent to a joint PD controller running in this two kilohertz high frequency loop. You have the joint torque fed into the robot. It, it gets applied. We get back out the sensor readings, which go back into that state estimator, which allows us to update both the joint PD commands and the neural network. And then for the results presented here and in our paper, we also include reference joint angles. So what this is, is a really common feature in RL for leg locomotion, particularly for going sim to reel, is we use feed forward reference joint angles. So if you're trying to match a desired trajectory and as part of your reward, it's relatively natural to say, okay, let's just feed forward those actuated joint angles. So the neural network only has to apply a delta on top of where you nominally want to be. Um, this works really well. Um, unfortunately, to get them, we have to run our reduced order library through an offline IK solver, which isn't ideal. However, since writing it, we've done some more work and we were able to actually remove it and train policies that are similarly capable, both in terms of smoothness and performance. The main difference we found is the training time. When you include these feed forward reference joint angles, you get a uh, much faster learning time. So looking a little bit at the actual learning problem. So we trained this in simulation using our Majoko model of CASI and the state estimator. We used the PPO algorithm uh, a maximum episode length of 400 steps of that 33 hertz learned control loop, which ends up giving you about 12 seconds of walking. Um, and then the way we do it is we, each time we do a, an episode, we select a random speed and initial state from the gate from that speed. And by seeding from around the motion, uh, especially early on, the, uh, the training is, sees all the different, uh, parts of the gates it's trying to accomplish. We then use this reward function here. Um, it has five terms, each of which is the exponential on a negative distance measure, which will bound each R to be between zero and one. And then because all of the coefficients sum to one, we end up with a total reward that is between zero and one for each step. The first three terms end up making up 70% of the total reward signal. And these all are based on the motion of the reduced order model. So the first one is matching the center of mass velocity. The next one is matching the foot position relative to the body. And the third one is matching the difference between its forward translation 
or it's really the deviation from sort of the forward translation direction. So if it drifts off to the left, this will drop off to zero. The other two are things that are under specified by the model. So the foot orientation, we want the foot feet to be continue to face forward and the model had point feet, so there is no foot orientation. And the last one is action difference. So we want, uh, if at all possible, to have smooth actions coming out of our network. So this penalizes deviation from one action to the next. And we take a look at how this performs. So in simulation, we're gonna look at uh, basically a step function in terms of user commanded velocity. And so if we put that into our, uh, our library, we can get out uh, the set of body velocities in the forward direction. We can see they oscillate uh, sort of faster and slower as they go, and that there's no transitions because we're just looking them up in a table. We look at how that actually applies to the actual robot velocity, and we can see that at lower speeds it tracks pretty well, and then in only a couple of steps it can converge pretty close to the new velocity. Um, but we see at the high speeds we uh, have a bit of a lag in terms of the average speed and the desired average speed, which we'll come back up a little bit later. So we can transfer this from simulation to hardware, and we can see a lot of that pelvis oscillation behavior seems to translate pretty well. And we can even uh, perform these sort of speed changes outdoors on hardware. So we had to do this outside, not on our treadmill, because if you try to change speeds rapidly on a treadmill, you end up with some weird inertial effects. Down. And we have some more videos of this uh, online. And if we look at our performance, so one important thing is this foot placement error. So if we want to use this to uh, track motions through cluttered spaces from a mo motion planner, we need to accurately track foot placement. And if we're under about one meter per second, we're doing pretty good uh, under about six, we're about six to seven centimeters of error. And as we go higher, we see that increase with speed. And if you look at it more carefully, this corresponds to the fact that the feet aren't reaching far enough forward because you're lagging in velocity. And then one other interesting feature is that we see the uh, center, or we see the ground reaction forces for our policy compared to uh, comparable previous work on Cassie also. And what we see is this characteristic double hump ground reaction forces, which shows up in the model motions and is a very common feature of spring, spring mass walking. And it's cool to see that appear here, which tells us something about the dynamics of the model are transferred. So I'd like to thank uh, Stefan Offer from Intel uh, with Computing Resources Help, uh, the rest of the colleagues and co-authors from uh, my lab, and our funding agencies. Thank you.